linguistic, etc., etc., classical linguistic tackles this problem, but once again, I'll show you that it is inadequate because it is contingent on the first question. What I shall not uh, reveal to you tonight, because it's another uh, subject for a lecture, is about the rise of religions. We forget, in a especially atheistic world, and I am a methodological atheist, in other words, I may be privately uh, a believer, but I am convinced that I define methodological atheism for scientific research. You cannot be a scientist unless you are methodologically an atheist, because immediately that you bring in religion, there's no point to science. Science does need a, a, a total focus and concentration on its own methodology. Therefore, uh, the, uh, the, the, I will not talk about the rise of religions, and uh, we must understand that religion is culture. In other words, I'm talking now not as a religious person, but as a scientific methodological atheist to tell you that, of course, all culture arose from ancient religion, or rather, religion and culture are interchangeable something which in our age of mistaken atheism we do not appreciate or understand. So therefore I shall go back to, uh, to this uh, sort of original uh, question. Now to do kosher science you need mm, replicable methodology. I mean, I'm trying to even with you work out the scientific approach. In other words, it is very important that the scientist, and this started with Newton again, that he describes his methodology, which should be public, open, democratic, not secret, and replicable. In other words, everybody should, it, it should be accessible to other scientists, other people, to check and to do the same. Now, I do not have a single methodology. I have better. I have several methodologies. In terms of every question, I have its own methodology, which I can therefore show you as a kosher scientist to show you how you too can work it out. So this is not a sort of uh, uh, a magical sort of esoteric sort of secret knowledge uh, with secrets sort of uh, uh, which only uh, can be deciphered if you, I don't know, if you burn some kind of dead body or something, you know. So, um, so therefore, uh, what is my methodology of answering the first question? The first question, therefore, where did man, uh, where did the first piece of land arise? And here is the answer and how the methodology uh, to accompany it. So uh, before even uh, the idea of Pangea, you probably know the idea of Pangea that initially all the earth was one piece and later on it evolved into different uh, tectonic plates which then split up etc etc but initially of course the whole piece of earth was one but then asking where was the first piece of land specifically before Pangaea was formed is precisely the equivalent of asking what was before the Big Bang? I mean, one of, the, one of the difficulties of the Big Bang theory is that no cosmologist can answer the question that even if you accept the Big Bang, what was there before the Big Bang? So me asking where was the first piece of land is, is a parallel equivalent to that question. In other words, one is going even further back than the accepted uh, 
uh, notions. So therefore, uh, here is then uh, the answer or uh, the, the very important uh, secret for the first time to, to be understood. The reason I'm slightly <coughs> hesitating is because I want to make sure that uh, we don't uh, misunderstand uh, the implications of this which are immense. Now, for a very long time, therefore, um, these ideas, as I was telling you in very ancient <coughs> times, were in the preserve of the priestly caste, the ruling classes, etc. And uh, out of this came what was called esoteric knowledge um, and the secret societies. I would like to also tell you that all these secret societies and so on are just uh, sweet attempts by people trying to learn something secret, important, etc., etc. But they are all nonsense. In other words, I'm not at all uh, telling you uh, that you should join secret societies. Uh, it's all, you know, sort of poetic nonsense. Uh, but the point is that uh, I want to show you how uh, there is a methodology uh, which you can use in terms of esoteric knowledge. Now, the Armenians had a very uh, big tradition of uh, esoteric uh, knowledge, which uh, unfortunately is lost and needs to be recovered. There was a very famous 7th century philosopher called David the Invis Invincible. In, in Armenian, it was David Anhaft. He was a philosopher who went from Armenia to Greece, then reached Egypt in the 7th century and had debates in Alexandria. And he was given the title of Trimegistus, Trimegistus, which was only the title given to the number one esotericist and the greatest esotericist. So uh, not only, therefore, he acquired that title, moreover, uh, he, he acquired the title of being philosophically invincible. Nobody could uh, a sort of, uh, uh, nobody could defeat him in debate. In other words, he was a huge personality, totally lost to history. Uh, again, I rather that I was a reincarnation of David, David Anhaft, uh, rather than Isaac Newton and Darwin. So, um, so uh, I'm not using, I mean, he was a great scientist simultaneously. Uh, I mentioned it only to say, therefore, that these traditions are alive in kind of scientific esoteric knowledge. I am, therefore, saying that esoteric knowledge, which people think uh, is magic, etc., is, in fact, has scientific basis in it. Now, one of the great compendiums, or compendia, of uh, this kind of knowledge, we uh, unfortunately uh, have forgotten, is the Old Testament. You see, because of Darwin, and Darwin proved that, uh, you know, uh, God could not have created uh, the sort of the world in seven days. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it is remarkable. People don't seem to understand that the seven days can be a complete symbolical uh, numerology. I mean, you know, seven days can be seven million years, and it can be seven billion years. So, I mean, it is not very far from the scientific assessment that, uh, that uh, uh, the universe is 12 billion years old. Uh, so if you take the seven days as uh, each one representing two billion years, then you have got 14 billion years which is almost a perfect fit with the scientific assessment. Assuming that the scientific assessment is correct, 
that's